Hello everyone, welcome to part 7 of this tutorial. So what we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna start to set up our uh, authentication middleware. Uh, uh, so what we're gonna do in this one is just set up like the plain middleware and stuff like that. And in the next video we're gonna uh, start to work on the register and logging uh, resolver. So in this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit like what we've done in the REST API tutorial, where we're gonna make use of Chai. So Chai is a, it's a library where you, finally it's a router library will give you a lot more than just a standard library. It's built on top of this, but they, they have made uh, like a bit, uh, uh, I think, friendly. So yeah, so we're gonna work with that. You're gonna see it's gonna be pretty simple. So first thing, we want to do a go get uh, github.com go chai chai this way that gonna give us inside our mod this library right there so now what we can do it's here below the port what i'm gonna do it's i'm gonna say router it's equal to chai that new router so now it's a mux router so now we have a lot of the function we can use now it's the same as what we've done in the recipe but one of the things we uh, like about that is the use. So use, finally, it's a way to append a middleware handler to the MUX middleware stack. So uh, one of the middleware I want to try uh, in this one, and we didn't use it before in the REST API, is the course library from RS. So github.com course. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to add that as a middleware. So course for cross origin, uh, uh, like uh, you don't want, finally, uh, uh, somewhere else to hit your uh, server so you want to um, uh, add a bit of a security for that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say course that new and inside this new here we can add option okay so option here add a lot of option we have allo origin allo origin fun allo request and a lot of stuff so what we want to do it's i want to debug i'm gonna say true here option to pass i don't care about that allo credential i'm gonna say true all the rest, I'm going to say nothing, but here the allo origin, as you can see, can be an array of string like that. So now I, I can create one here and I can pass. If you remember the port we use who is just finally uh, the default port, which is going to be 8080. So I'm going to say HTTP, localhost, 8080, like that. So what I say is I, I, I allow the origin to be this, uh, finally, uh, domain right there. Another thing, it's not the new uh, don't like it, like the use don't like this thing because finally the use here need to receive like a, an handler. So that's why here you can just say handler like that. And now the router is happy with that. After that, I want to add some middleware coming from Chai. And one of the middleware is the request ID. I mean, I just it's just because I always use it, and maybe we don't really need it, but for now it's okay. And I also want the logger just to see some of the log, example the time it take and stuff like that. And now here, what I want to do is I want to add our custom middleware right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in the project, and I'm gonna create now a new package called middleware and inside this package i'm going to create a new go file called out middleware this middleware stuff here going to need one library and the library is a G gwt library so it's going to be almost the same authentication we've done in the recipe i want so go get oh go get one sec github.com, this name I cannot pronounce, wt.go, perfect. Now here, what I want to do, it's I want to create my middleware. So I'm gonna say func out middleware. This out middleware here, gonna return a func, gonna have an HTTP handler, and I don't want to name it, who's gonna return another HTTP handler, okay? So now here I can return a func, who here have a HTTP handler, and I'm gonna call next because that's gonna be easy for me to know, okay, now time to jump on the, uh, the other one. And now this one also need to return another HTTP handler, and for that, 
we're gonna build one by using http the handler funk right there and this one here gonna get a function and inside a function i can get the response writer and r for the http request like that and now my middleware is ready to go i'm gonna already start and use this middleware so i'm gonna say router that use my alt middleware like that and now you're gonna see this one don't like it so it's used and this one don't like it okay and the way you don't like it finally it's because uh, i didn't import it the thing is now uh, we have a middleware package and we already import another middleware here okay so what i can do it's first i'm gonna try to out middleware and you see jet uh, jet burn i mean golan call that middleware too but it's not something i like it so i'm gonna rename that to become custom middleware so now by calling that custom middleware it's gonna be much more simpler for me to know okay this thing is something i'm building myself now jumping back in the alt middleware so this alt middleware is going to be pretty simple okay so it's gwt token so the first thing here I want to have a token who's gonna came from a function called parse token we're gonna receive our request so i'm gonna create this function parse request a parse token i'm gonna receive uh, the r as a http request and what i want him to return is a gwt token and also an error like that okay so here for the parse token, it's going to be almost the same code we've done in the uh, other tutorial. So here I get the request parse from request. So this thing, it's coming from GWT. So from the request, they can parse, so extract and parse the GWT token from the HTTP request. So finally, inside this one, they're going to take the token from the request. But also, you need here to receive an extractor, okay? And an extractor, it's an interface. We need to um, follow the contract where they have the method extract token. We here receive an HTTP request and returning a string and an error. So we need to create this out extractor, okay? So are we going to build that? I'm going to call that out extractor. And I'm gonna create this variable alt extractor, okay? But I'm gonna create that outside. I'm gonna say var alt extractor. And this var extractor is gonna be a pointer, uh, not a pointer, but the reference like that from a request post extraction filter. Okay, so this post extraction filter have this extractor interface. So he uh, kind of, he compose, Compose with that. So now inside that, we need to uh, uh, finally fill those two things with extractor and filter. We're gonna do this in a moment, but we're gonna finish with the one we have here. After that, here we're gonna have a function. We here have a token from the GWT, and we want to return an interface and an error. Okay, and now inside this one. It's going to be pretty simple. It's I want to get a token. And first thing I want to get my, um, not a token, but I want to get the, uh, my, the bytes of my uh, ENV, okay? So I'm going to call something called GWT secret, okay? So I've done that just before we start. It's I create a GWT secret inside my .env. So that's going to be a secret in here. Finally, that's the, why we return an uh, interface like that. But I can, what I want to do finally, just returning this kind of secret where I, when I'm going to parse with that, so as you can see, so this function, so this key function here, finally, parse the method, use this callback function to apply the key to verification. So I need to re give it back, like which key to check to become the re uh, verification. And I'm going to use this key here, GWT secret. So that's going to be a, a string I'm going to, make it much more secure than this uh, really bad thing here. But this is the one I'm gonna use in this tutorial. And now I'm gonna return the T and nil because I don't have an error and I'm gonna return finally uh, that as a empty interface. So it can be any type. Now here, 
For this function, parse token, I need to return the pointer to a token and the error. So what I can do is I can return the GWT token. And if I have an error, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna wrap an error, and I'm gonna say parse, parse token error like that. So now we can continue where we get bef uh, before. So now the token here is a, G a pointer to GW token, and now we have an error, okay? So now here what I can do is I can check my error if it's not nil. If my error is not nil, I'm gonna call next serve HTTP, and I'm gonna pass W and R, and I'm gonna return. Uh, early return. Now the, the thing is, you may be asked, okay, inside a REST API, I will have stopped the user here, okay? I will have break um, his request. And why here I continue is because the way we're gonna use the alt middleware in our uh, GraphQL layer, it's we're gonna get the current user from the resolver. And some of the resolver don't ask the user to be authenticated. What I mean by that is we're gonna have the logging and a register mutation, and maybe an example forget password and stuff like that. And those mutations don't require to be authenticated because how can you register and be a user at the same time? How can you log and be a user at the same time? And how can you forget a password if you're already in the system? So what we're gonna do is our way of doing thing is gonna be to get the user from the context. So we're gonna finally inject the user inside the context. And in the top of our resolver, for those who need to be authenticated, we're gonna check if the current user exists and is a valid user from this context. If not, now I'm gonna stop my resolver at this point. So yes, that's gonna be painful because we're gonna need to add this check on each of the resolver where we need the authentication. But yeah, that's the way I, I, I find it. I know, I'm pretty sure we can do this with directive. It's something uh, we can check later to uh, make sure then uh, uh, finally dry up a bit the code because you're gonna see gonna have a lot of uh, duplicate code. But yeah, I mean, it's Golang, so we, we, <laughs> we do a lot of uh, uh, duplicate code, but yes. So now here we have the token, okay? So here I'm gonna get the claim and I want to check from my token that claim. Dot GWT dot map claim. So here what I'm doing is I'm casting this claim. So example, if you look at the claim right now, it's a claim of token type, but I want to cast it to be a map claim, okay? And the okay here is gonna be a Boolean who we'll say if it's valid or not. Uh, finally, if I was able to cast that. And after that, uh, finally, just really to check if it's valid or not. So now by doing this, we can create a if here. And now here I can do Okay, so if it's okay, this one, and also if my token with here dot valid with a boolean, so I'm checking if my token claim can be uh, cast to a map claim from the GWT, and if it's okay plus the token is valid, now I'm gonna do something with that. What I'm gonna do with here. I think I'm gonna go with the else. I really don't like using else, but yeah, I mean, you, we kind, yeah, I don't like to use else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take back this thing. I don't like so much else, then I'm gonna do this like that. So if it's not okay, or if token is not valid, I'm gonna do, this so now I can continue right there okay now here I want to get my user 
And now, how can I get my user? So that's why now this all middleware I've created a higher order function. It's because I want to be able to inject here a Postgres user repo. Later, that's gonna be just maybe a repository. So we're gonna be able to mock that, but for now it's like that. So now here I can call repo that get user by ID. And now how can I get this ID? It's by calling this claim, which is a map claim. So a map claim is now it's gonna be just, so if you look at is, uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, right there. It's just a map string interface. So it's a, uh, if you came from a JavaScript or something like that, it's like an object of the keys, a string and whatever for the interface. So now here what I can do, it's I want to take the GTI and I want, because this get user by ID need to receive a string, I want to cast that to a string like that. Now here, if I have an error, I don't gonna care about that, okay? And after that here, but finally I can care if I have an error, so if error is not nil, I'm gonna continue doing again this same thing. And finally here, now I can do context. So I want to get my context and I'm gonna get that by calling context with value. And now I want to take the context parent, so you see parent from the request context. And I want now to inject the user here. So the first thing we want is to have a key. And I'm gonna inject my user. And I'm gonna finish this line and I'm gonna continue after that. So next serve HTTP, we pass the response writer. And now I can call my request with context to inject a new context. So if you look with context, it's finally create a new, con a new request with the context. So finally you can kind of inject like new stuff inside the context. And now I'm gonna pass it the new context we have. Finally, you just like think about like, here this context, it's like we're gonna mutate this context with the new user with this key. And now we're gonna create a new request with now this context which is now modified. So now I want to create this variable current user key. And I'm gonna just call that current user. So that's gonna be the name we're gonna have. But I don't want this key to be inside this function. I want this key to be even, I can call that to become a const like that. Okay. So now I can use it somewhere else. Now I want to finish this alt extractor, okay? So the, this alt extractor, what we're gonna do, it's first thing I uh, here for the filter, we need to create a function for that, okay? And this function, we're gonna call that, uh, I, I think all this factor is not good for, okay, yeah. So this all this factor is gonna be a multi extractor. sorry about that. And a multi extractor here, take finally a, a slice of extractor, okay? And that's why here we're gonna create all our out add our extractor, with the same thing finally as what we've seen uh, before, post extractor, yeah, perfect. So now here, here because we can receive like a slice of extractor, I'm gonna pass this out add our extractor, and now I also want to pass a, a, an extractor with argument extractor where here finally I'm gonna say access token. So finally the way that works is this multi extractor try extractor in order until one return a token string of an error uh, occur. So finally it's like I'm gonna try this one. If it's not working, I'm gonna jump on this one else. That's it. So for the extractor, I'm gonna say request that request that other extractor where I'm I want to get my token from this header. So finally, when we're gonna pass a header, the key is gonna be authorization. And now I need to pass here a filter. So for the filter, I'm gonna call that strip bearer prefix from token. So this function, I'm gonna create it right there. Here, I'm gonna receive a token 
and we want to return a string or an error like that so these three bearer prefix from token what we're gonna do it's first thing uh, it's just because i want to remove bearer from the token if the user have one so i'm gonna call bearer right there and what i'm gonna do it's I want to check so here the token is gonna came something like that so maybe something like bearer something like that okay so here what I want to do it's I want to check first the length of the token if it's bigger than the length of the bearer here because if it's not bigger it for sure bearer is not there because if it's not be bigger then it's really a smaller version of that so we don't gonna really care about that after that here i want to check also if string to uppers so i want to uppercase the token from is zero position and to the end of the bearer so finally i want to uppercase everything the token have so finally uh, not everything but like so finally it's bearer so it's a three six so i want to uppercase the from zero to six because i want to check if this thing gonna equal the bearer so i want to make sure that if i uppercase so this token if i uppercase that this thing equal bearer why i do this it's because Maybe someone gonna use bearer like that. Maybe someone gonna use bearer like that, or maybe someone gonna use bearer like that. So that is just a checkup I'm doing, and I just for this tutorial I don't really care. I just want people to be happy and uh, can be able to go to my app. So if it's not, I'm gonna return the token and nil. So that means I don't strip the bearer prefix, and I just say finally. Uh, I just say a hey, the to to do the go to the parse token and do his job. Now here, when we have that, we just finally want to return now the token. But we want the token after the bearer. So here, if I'm looking again at this thing, I want to start at the end. So now I'm here. But I don't want just that, I want plus one because I want to get to the space here. And now I say, give me everything after that and nil. So what that meant, mean here, it's give me this token from everything. But I mean, uh, give me uh, from here. And now give me everything after that. So now we get just that. Okay. So now we have done that, we have done that. Perfect. Now the only thing left, and after that, in the next video, we're gonna start to use this. It's our function where we're gonna be able to get the current user from context. So we're gonna get a context, who is gonna be equal to context.context. .context. And we're gonna return either a pointer to a user or an error after that here we're gonna check if the context that value with the current user key we have created as a constant equal nil so this value like that gonna return us nil if we don't have nothing so if we have nothing i'm gonna return nil and here i'm gonna return a format error f and i'm gonna say no user in context like that now oh, i can have use uh, error i think i can have use error the new like that after that here i want to get the user and check if the context that value have the current user to be so finally if it's able to cast that to become a pointer to a user. So that's why we have again the okay. So now here what we can do, it's if 
it's not okay or and now it's a, a really big gotcha it's because here it's going to become a pointer to a user example if this pointer to a user return and it's kind of nil ish they're going to all have their default value so what i mean by that is a user have a string 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 what is the default value of a string it's an empty string so if it's not okay or the user id is equal to an empty string that mean we don't have a real user so now we can return nil and we can return new and we can say no user in context and now because both are equal sorry because both are equal now i can say introduce a variable and i can say error no user in context like that And finally, here, if we have it, we return the user and nil. Okay, so I think it's pretty simple here. It's maybe just this gotcha. Just remember when I do this okay, it's just because this thing gonna give me a boolean about if I'm able to cast that. Now we just need to jump back to our server because now the server is missing something. It's, miss it's missing the Postgres user repo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing and I'm gonna do this here, user repo, and I'm gonna create that at the top because we only want one instance of that. So now I can reuse this instance like that. So yeah, so that's it for this tutorial, uh, this video. In the next one, we're gonna uh, register in the Ginga user and we're gonna test everything we've done here. I think it just make more sense to kind of go backwards. So now we see what we need to fill after that. It's going to be easier to see what's going to happen. So I hope you enjoy and we're going to talk in the next video. Remember, the code is in the description and uh, each part have is uh, each part have is a branch. And uh, don't uh, don't forget to subscribe if you didn't. And also uh, hit me up on the comment if you have any kind of question. I hope you enjoy it and we talk in the next one. Bye everyone.